Hello and welcome to Books ABC, our series about book lovers and book summaries that actually can make a, a reference for our busy and noisy lives. Powered again by my podcast, Inis Guarda YouTube podcast series, in partnership with our platforms, openbusinesscouncil.org, citiesabc.com, and fashionabc.org. So today we are here with a fantastic book that is as well quite technical. So I'm going to go through a couple of things and probably the team will put some graphics while we go. So this is the book. Here we are. And uh, I will highlight, so Age of Invisible Machines, a practical guide to creating a hyper-automated ecosystem of intelligent digital workers by Rob Wilson with George Tyson. Again, by Wiley, one of our favorite publishing houses that actually highlights the challenge with the especially conversational AI and uh, hyper automation. And I think it's a very important topic because when people talk about AI, it talks about this kind of a blurred vision that is, of course, the, from the, the science fiction films. But the reality is that this is already here among us, and especially how we look at uh, augmented um, uh, realities and the hyper automated ecosystem of intel intelligent uh, work. It's right now part of everyone, especially in the Western world, but even if not in the Western world, everyone is using a phone. Everyone is in some way digital experience, even if you are in a emerging Africa country. So the Age of Invisible Machines is quite a technical group, a book, um, and it highlights uh, a lot of interesting things that I want to especially notice here. Uh, this is actually probably an entire podcast and I ex expect to interview the, the author. But the book is divided in three parts. Uh, that is imagining an ecosystem of intelligent digital workers, which I think we are all part of it in one way or the other. Planning an ecosystem of intelligent digital workers and then building an ecosystem of intelligent digital workers. And of course, the conclusion. So the author is quite a well-known personality. Rob Wilson is a founder, lead designer and technology behind on onereach.ai. And the highest scoring company in Gardner's uh, first critical capabilities for enterprise conversational AI platforms report. Rob has spent over two decades applying his deep understanding of user centric design to unlocking e power automation. And he builds UI magazine, he built UI magazine into the world's largest experience design publication while creating a full service UX firm that competed with IDEO and Frog Design. In addition to collecting over 130 awards across the fields of design and technology, Rob has held executive roles at several public trade companies. And very important thing, he was as well an Hollywood uh, personality where actually he was involved in some very high profile films, especially as well in technology. And actually in the first iterations of uh, Hollywood going to digital. And the co-author, uh, Josh Tyson, is an author and producer who has held leadership roles with a variety of organizations, including TechSex, TEDx Smile Isle and UX Magazine. And Josh co hosts 9K, a podcast from the future, and his writing has appeared in numerous publications, including New York Times and Treasure. And of course, the book has a website, invisiblemachines.ai, which I suggest you guys to go. So I want to, because this is quite a technical book. So I think it's very important to discuss the concept of conversational and artificial intelligence. And I'll just read a bit about this, because in the end of the day, when you talk about AI, like I mentioned, there's so much myths. And I think everyone has an opinion, but in the end of the day, very few people go deep on the rabbit hole. So the resistance to automation, and I'm reading from the chapter two, the resistance to automation and conversational AI has many facets. Much of the pushback relates to the automation of tasks that people don't believe machines can do well or don't trust machines to do at all. As conversational AI and ecosystems for auto hyper automating becomes the norm, however, it will become readily apparent that there are a vast number of tasks and processes that can be automated with great success by machines, so long as these machines have humans in control and guiding the process. Automation refers to tasks humans typically perform being performed instead by machines. 
By extension, hyper automation is achieved by successfully orchestrating advanced technologies such as machine learning, compassive architecture, computer vision, conversational technologies, and code free developing tools. In order to automate tasks and processes that are outside the capabilities of humans alone, it's the coordination of advanced technologies to work in concert to automate with massive enhanced impact. It's tempting to think of conversational AI as nothing more than a new interface that experienced designers can apply their skills to, but it's something much more larger than that. Conversational AI represents a vast emergent set of technology obscured by layers of hype and misinformation. There's a very reasonable sense of urgency surrounding its adoption and the implementation within the business community, but putting it to work requires a fully understanding of what it is and actually entails. This excerpt from the page 16, chapter 2, is a critical element. And I want to highlight for everyone listening to me, especially for my team and for the people that are close to this podcast, every task that can be automated will be automated. So I think right now is how we manage this automation and create processes. And especially as we prepare the tools and the architecture for this. And I think most of the companies fail because they don't use the tools correctly and they don't look at the architecture. And I speak for myself, this book was quite uh, um, wide open to me to look at these different things. And the key takeaways, some of the key takeaways, there's, there's a key takeaways for each chapter, but is that the APR automation that we are facing right now is effectively at the core of anything about work. And I think like the book highlights is how we can actually take this to create productive people that actually can enhance and create solutions for business. And this is a big challenge because most of the people are not educated in school how to do this. And uh, I, I've been as well business school um, teacher. This is actually quite difficult. Most of my students were less digital than I am. I know that I'm not the conventional digital personality, but nevertheless, we need to teach this and we need to learn this and keep learning. So at the moment, when you look at uh, hyper, hyper automation efforts, and I will highlight this part here, let me see if the camera picks this correctly. And I will try to make sure that this, these infographics are particularly interesting. So at the end of the day, we're looking at hyper automation efforts without no code and conversational technologies that look at artificial intelligence, machine learning, natural language processing and understanding, robotic process automation, optical character, recognition, process mining. So all of these put together creates a huge optimization for businesses. The challenge right now is how, and especially after COVID-19, our society is going to cope with this because effectively, most of the people are using all these software tools, and special designers, UI UX personalities, but they forget how to look at the ecosystem and how to use this optimization to improve processes and so forth. And I think this is very important because one of the, the key areas the book highlights very well, and you can see here, is this automation and the process of automation. So in the end of the day, we have uh, uh, four evolutionary stages of automation. That is literacy, knowledge, that goes from simplicity to then intelligence, and then wisdom that goes for complex. And this is very important, the example of the skills that we're taking right now. First of all, we have lack of digital literacy. I'm sure that everyone listening to us here probably doesn't understand most of the concepts here or are struggling to understand it. But this digital literacy is a key element for success of businesses, organizations, and as well for people keeping jobs or losing jobs. Because effectively, we can automate most of the work and we're going to automate most of the work. There's no doubt, it's not going to stop. It's just the way we use this process for our own productivity. And as well as the book highlights, and, and I mentioned that in the preface, how we can actually create intelligent digital workers. So, this is going to be the key element, and my book was 4AR, AR, Reinventing a Nation, and this is the next level of details, how we actually can go from the theory to the practice. And this is a very, very powerful thing. 
and there's a white whale like Rob Wilson um, did in introduction. Okay, so if you look at that, uh, and it's quite interesting, is that uh, um, there's a parallel here with Moby Dick, the classic of literature. That like Captain Ahab in Moby Dick, I've spent many a work a waking hour in the heated pursuit of a powerful and elusive white whale, conversational AI. For lingering days, months, and years, I've chased this steely beast on the horizon. I was frequently knocked, of course, by the complexity and newness of the various associated technologies, but I kept up the chase on both sides of land and over all sides of Earth, as Melville would say. So I think this is on the page uh, on the initially introduction by Rob Wilson. And I think it's interesting, this metaphor. I read the moment, the wells of our times is the complexity of our technologies. And the, our challenge, as in the book of Moby Dick, is to find these whales and combat these whales and actually understand the whales of complexity. So I think especially for people listening to us, there's a couple of very interesting infographics here. You can find it as well in the website. But the literacy stage is a key element here. And like I mentioned, at the moment, most of people are primitive digital workers. I even say young people in universities are primitive digitally literary, literary people. So we need to focus on creating from digital primitive worker to basic intelligent digital worker that goes to intelligent digital worker and how we actually can look at personal intelligent digital work and find the balance on this. So I think this is a big challenge when you deal with these technologies and actually the complexity of technology, different UI UX, different um, uh, even browsers that we have, uh, different windows that we have in our computer, from the computer to mobile, to desktop, to iPad, to uh, even Wi-Fi, to all different things. And now we take this in terms of uh, promoting and creating UI UX of technology and products that actually can create uh, set of systems. So it's quite a technical book. It's not for everyone, but I think if definitely you want to learn about this, I suggest that you look at this. And now we can actually look at the applications there's a lot of things here that you can actually interact with patterns, key takeaways, and especially how this can help you becoming a creative, intelligent worker. Digital, of course, because you are in digital age. So I think especially in the areas of design and production, design checklist is a key element that is missing in a lot of people. I miss this myself in my day-to-day -day activities. I think my team is even more lacking this, and the coaching on these areas are key. So. I think how we can actually locate what people are searching with all the documents we create, how we actually can create a production design checklist, which I'm going to just to highlight some things, from credible sources to controllable sources, to valuable sources, to learnable and delightful. Of course, creating all these processes is not easy. Any organization is made of people. Every person has a different experience and a different knowledge. But I think it's this kind of accessibility that is key for our experiences. And how we take this forward is the difference between success and failure in our digital times. And I think I want to highlight this because uh, I think if you don't take this series, definitely we're going to see a society with a lot of challenges, but we're going to see as well, a lot of challenges how this can actually disrupt society and create very, uh, I would say, challenging situations. So I will just finish with some words from the, the conclusion on the chapter 18. Where do we go from here? On page 233. Things may seem bleak right now, but we actually had a truly momentous moment in our history as a species. The situation is dire, but we have everything we need to save ourselves. To quote a couple of movies I did work on, life will go on, we will prevail. This was from Deep Impact, the film that the author was involved, 1998. Never give up, never surrender, the Galaxy Quest from 1999. My team has played the part in designing AI solutions that have helped people quit smoking and contribute to curbing sex trafficking. I've, first hand, I've seen firsthand how powerful technology can be in terms of changing individual behaviors and disrupting criminal actions. Hyperautomation might very well represent our best change, chance at getting out of massive pickle our industrialized world has dunked itself in. For that to happen, however, it seems to be it needs to be implemented in an inclusive manner that enables us all. 
I think this says everything about the book and it's a great positive way. So like this book, and I'll repeat, Age of Invisible Machines, a practical guide to creating a hyper automated ecosystem of digital um, intelligent digital workers by Rob Wilson with Josh Tyson by Wiley. Please have a look. Like all the books I suggest here, these are books that are critical for our times. Thank you for being here. Uh, there's much more. This actually, I keep it simple as the books ABC, but it's an important thing. These books help me. I hope they help you as well. Please leave a comment, engage, and uh, looking forward to see you again.